Friday Night Live with Craig Harper. How are you doing, sir? Uh, Joe, I'm so well, despite everything. Yeah, very well. Thank you. Good to see you tonight. Yeah, good. Listen, cheers to, uh, to uh, what's this, uh, after work yes, Joe. interview. Good. Thank you very much. Well, the nice part about this is we're both at home, mm -hmm. we're not driving anywhere. Exactly. So it's all good. Being very responsible. Um, so, yeah. So, man, thanks for being on the show, man. Um, definitely. Thanks for having me, mate. Yeah. Now, You've had a very interesting life. I mean, you're not you're not even from South Africa. You're from Zim or somewhere originally, aren't you? How did how did you end up with this race car, everything on this side? Oh well, I was born in Durban many years ago. Uh, folks took me to to Bulawayo, well, Zimbabwe, when I was only two, so a baby. In many ways, I, I feel like a Zimbabwean. Um, it's fading a little bit as I become more of a Cape Townian, South African. Um, so I've come back to my to my roots, if you like, not Durban. The um, the love of uh, of sports cars and cars and, and motor motor cars in general uh, was born out of driving them. I absolutely love driving cars. I'm passionate about uh, driving beautifully and elegantly and efficiently and fast when the when the conditions are right. I love it so. Everything that I, that I, in every way that I relate to cars, it's about, it, it draws from that love of, of driving them. So that's where it comes from. And, and, and that love of driving cars led me to racing them. Um, and I raced them in Zimbabwe and I, and I rallied in Zimbabwe. And um, I didn't um, have access to lots of money, so I had to make my own cars. I literally had to go and make them. So get some steel, borrow dad's welder, get his, get his, um, his, his night watchman who lived on the property. He was a builder. So there was scaffolding and there was the builder's yard. We cleared the space out in the builder's yard. We had a tree stump that was cut off. We didn't even have a vice. Can you believe it? And I started building my first car. I was about 18. It was terrible, but it was a great experience and I got to race it. Um, and I got to, um, experience motorsport that way in Zimbabwe on that amazing racetrack. It was a Formula One racetrack. You know, there were two racetracks that were registered or licensed to have a Grand Prix on, and one of them was in Bulawayo in Zimbabwe. The other was I a car on. I see. It's a fact, my brother. So you can, yeah, it's an amazing circuit. Very, That's very fast. Insane. It's getting bumpy now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So cut my teeth there um, and, and, and really loved the motorsport and, and loved the driving aspect, you know, getting to control a car at the limit. Uh, John Love was one of my mentors. Um, and I read his book, and I went. And he lived in Bulawayo, so I got to spend time with him. And uh, you know, he wasn't a very talkative guy for a young to a guy a young person like me. He was a little bit sort of, you know. But fantastic uh, to have a chance to watch him racing, and then to um, ask him to come and have a look at my car and give me some advice. And he did. He came down. He says, "Bloody springs are too hard. Throw them off." Just be more compliant. So, um, yeah, my history starts off in, in Bulawayo, if you like, um, with the motorsport, and then it, it progressed away. I uh, started a business in, in Botswana, in Francistown, and that's where the Harper Type 5 was born. And I realized that I wanted, I had some time on my hands. The business was going along quite nicely, but there was a bit of spare time. I could be creative. <clears throat> it had been a while since I'd last raced, um, uh, four or five years. So, I wanted to get back into something, you know. I couldn't find a mid-engine um, car that I could order and build it up from a kit. It just didn't exist um, in South Africa at the time. There was lots of um, Beetle-based sports cars, little um, 356s and 550s, uh, Speedsters, I think it was. Or, um, and I didn't want a beach buggy. So, uh, you know, I wanted a real performance car. Um, so... You know, I looked around around the world and saw the Ultimas and saw this, uh, the GTR Spiders and obviously the Catrums. I didn't want a, another Catrum. I designed and built my own and raced it for years in Zimbabwe. So as much as I love that uh, very sort of minimalistic design, I wanted a bit more protection around me. I wanted something that looked like a Lamar racing car, you know, yeah. um, but, but affordable and drivable on the street. So that all happened in Botswana. And, uh, and then the, the plan was to come to, to Cape Town and make a fortune building sports cars. I don't recommend you try that route. 
No, so here I am in Cape Town. I can, I can see the flaws in that in, in that in that plan immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Building yes. supercars yes. in South Africa and making it had, it doesn't work. So I had stars in my eyes, um, but yeah, I'm still here. And and now we've to date we built 22 Harpers in total. And we might build some more, but it's for us it's not it's not the reason for being anymore. It's, we've moved on from from that little little episode, if you like. And and now we we're based in Cape Town. Now we do lots of fans, fantastic work for lovely lovely sport on lovely sports cars um, for people that absolutely adore their cars. They they get a real kick out of out of owning a car that's that's unique and different. And and frankly, I love it. I think it's I think I've got the best life. Basically. You guys, so you're still building the, the, the Harpers, but you, you guys are now managing, maintaining, or, or upgrading other, other sports cars or race cars and stuff at the same time. Is that correct? It's true, yeah. So we'll get a call from somebody, and he's bought himself. Um, it's generally a Birkenesque type car, a Lotus yeah. 7-ish type car, and he's bought the thing on, off, um, off a picture, and it arrives in, in Cape Town, and it's, it's just awful. Yeah. It's, um, Home it's building. awful. And it's a home built car. We've had some lovely Birkins in it, just need setting up, you know, just getting the springs, the damper set properly and getting the, the geometry right. And then there's suddenly lovely cars, per, perfect cars to drive. Get a lot of work like that from real, real basket cases that they're attached to the car and they want it to, to be more reliable, to actually perform and handle. Um, just getting it focused and, and into, the, into the zone. That's where I get a lot of. A lot of the kick out of my, my job is, is getting cars just into the sweet spot. Now, on, on the Harper, so which one are you now on the, the Mark V? Am I, am I correct? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. The type 5, sorry. And now you've got, but your base that you guys, I mean, I, I know we, we, we've had a brief discussion about your base is, uh, is Toyota, if I'm not mistaken, that you guys use, isn't it? For sure. For sure, the Harpers, the, 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 the Harper Type 5 and the Type 6. <clears throat> the, the Type 5, obviously, was, was the original mid-engine, mm. rear mid-mounted transverse thing. So the idea is to do what the MR2 did and the, the Fiat X19 did. Just move the engine to the back, you know. Yeah. Build a frame, make it nice and spacious, and then stick a body on top of that. And that was based on Toyota. We're moving. We're not so attached to to using Toyota stuff anymore. There was a time that was really affordable, really available. But there's some amazing, there's some amazing engines. And what how we see the harp these days, the platform is simply a canvas. It handles all the suspension, uh, design, geometry, etc. Is done. It's sorted. Car looks cool. Some people love it. Some people is beautiful. don't love it. Hey, you can't please everybody. Thank you, Joe. So there's a nice blank canvas. And we, we have customers coming to us to saying, what can you put this in? Can you put that in? Absolutely, we can. So we, we're having a lot of fun with that at the moment, doing really bespoke builds, not insisting that the client uses Toyota. There are some parts that, that make sense to use it, like the uprights, you know, because mm -hmm. those are built into the car, they're designed into the geometry. Yeah. To change that would be would be expensive. From well, then, the then you're changing the chassis mounts and all that type of stuff. You, you, you're changing the whole driver's yeah. and everything on the car. Obviously. You can do it, but it's just, why would you do it? The car handles beautifully at the moment. It's really a, it's a pleasure oh, no, to drive on the limit. I, I, I actually drove Sean's, um, and okay. I think we, we had an event the one day. I mean, that thing corners like it's on rails. It just sits on the yeah. ground. I can't believe it, it was such a smooth ride, though. Even look, I, I'm not—I can't even remember what motor and stuff he was running in his, but just responsive. I mean, and it's just the what I loved about the driving in the car is, I mean, you, you sit so deep in it. You, you've just got that. I, I like the fact that you said Lamar. You, you really you you've got this race, even though you're driving down the main road in Cape Town. You've got this like race Formula One feel when you're sitting behind it. Which is just such an ex amazing experience, you know? Yeah, no, for sure, mate. That's exactly the, the impression I want you to have to, mm. to take away. And, and a feeling of confidence that the car is under you and you can, if you have to, it's an extension of your hands, an extension yes. of, your, of your feet. You can feel it um, everywhere. That, absolutely. So that, that was certainly my, my intention. So I'm delighted you have that response to the car. I've got dogs moving around here. No, sorry about that. Get them off the thing. So, um, 
so yeah, we're not we're not stuck with Toyota anymore. We, we're happy to do a sort of a blank a blank canvas, and in and in, in a way, sort of enable our client's dream, just help it to come true in some in some fashion using our our piece of piece of canvas. We use the car like that these days. But we do very little work on Harpers now. We're doing so much work on Cobras and Sevens, um, GT40s, um, classic Morgans, you name it. And it's it's endlessly interesting. It really is. And it's and we're dealing with a range of clients that and I'm not trying to sell them my thing anymore. I'm just making their thing work and make it pleasure to own and drive. And so oh. we're having a jaw. Well, what really you're good. Doing, sorry, for what you're doing there, I mean, Look, I, I, I've dealt with that. For years, I hated the AC Cobra. I couldn't stand it. And, and that was because I, I grew up in the kit car center era, you know, where the, the ACs that came out were just horrible. Bad suspension, you know, everything was jag front and rear. And just, they were just badly set up and badly built. Um, and I, I think there's a lot of good cars out there that was just, like I said, needed someone like you, someone that can come in and just tweet because I think the ACs, the, the Morgans, the, the Lotus Sevens and stuff, I mean, a lot of those cars were built by doctors and lawyers and all these guys who, who didn't really have a lot of car knowledge but wanted to attempt something by themselves. Um, to get that expert person in, it doesn't matter what you actually want, to get that expert person in, to, it just gives it a look over and go, okay, well, no, you went out, you're, you're okay here, but we need to, I mean, yeah, I, I get guys yeah. at shows, uh, I get guys at motor shows that get very angry with me because they'll show me a car and then I'll, I'll look at the car and I'll look at the chassis and I'm like, Dude, you, know, you need to touch up your welding here. You know, you need to do this. So your strengthening's not there. And I'm not being critical because I'm trying to be a dick. I'm, I'm being, to me, it's a safety conscious, safety thing at the same time. And also I, I know how the guys that I grew up, how, how the criticism from them comes through. So you don't want this newbie that comes into the thing and he's so proud of everything that he's done, but his welding might look like bungee shit and that type of stuff. But instead of guys just ripping into shreds, someone's coming along and go, just come and help you. Let's get this right. Yeah, it's not, gonna, it's not that much. We're not reinventing the wheel here. Yeah, so I love what you do. Yeah. Good up for you there. Definitely. Thank you. And, and in fact, that empowerment, that, that, that teaching, that, um, that vibe is such a, is becoming more and more a key part of what we do, where we'll have little clinics to explain, for example, bump steer, or we'll have a little clinic that shows the guys all the forms of welding that they can do at home. You know, um, we'll have a little, a little clinic on, on, on gas flowing cylinder heads or, or what cam time does or, um, turbo versus NA. So these are little interest clinics that we do. And it's such a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And the guys come down on a Saturday and, they, and we, we have a proper technical discussion That's around awesome. a topic. Yeah. Yes, it's fun. It's, it's really cool. So we, we, like to, we like to make that available as much as possible. It's a nice way to give to the community, our, our motoring brother, mm -hmm. brethren, if you like, brothers and sisters, um, who perhaps haven't had the advantages that I've had that we've had, you know, you can, you can play around and you can, I'm a trained mechanic, but many people also get the opportunity to, to, you know, to work with their hands and, yeah. and, and they get a little knife and a little lathe and that, and they, but they haven't been taught how to use it formally, you know, then, so we have a little clinic on turning or milling or something. It's fantastic fun. Everyone goes home happy and they can't wait to really get to work on their own machines or on their own projects. It's lovely. Lamination, laying up carbon stuff, I would love to learn the, laying out carbon fiber and that type of stuff. I mean, that is that is fascinating me these days. Like you can't believe. That. Yes, with carbon, and I, 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 I wish there was more guys. I mean, we, we, I know from dealing with guys like Green Brothers and this type of stuff, they all started incorporating carbon fiber into their builds, and everybody think it's all had to do with weight. It, it did. It's just the fact that you can reproduce a part so much faster than you could have done it in steel. And all the strengthening parts where with steel, you had to add in extra braces and add in extra seizures. With carbon fiber, you can just lay that in directly and you can get all that strength um, and it just becomes much easier to use. Sorry, I'm, I'm completely yeah. off topic. 
but yeah, this is, uh, like I said, carbon fiber to me is just completely fascinating. It's something I'd really love to get into. Now, where can people find out more about these, these, these Saturday things that you guys are up to? We'll post them. We've got a Facebook page. We'll post them there. We haven't done one for a while. You know, we've okay. come out of this crazy COVID. Obviously. Thing. But we will post them. And um, I'm, I'm quite jealous, uh, jealous of my time on the weekends. I don't have a lot of free time. So it'll be like once a month. Mm -hmm. We'll do a Saturday morning. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll post them on our Facebook page. So I'll be sure to let you know. Look, you don't want it too big because if it's too big, it's very impersonal and, mm. and people at the back can't see. So, you know, it's small, 10 people, you really get something out of it. You really learn something about what we love, which is our cars and driving them, you know, from a, from a nuts and bolts and a, a foundation sort of, uh, of what, how it all works. And yeah, I'll let you know for sure. Thanks, Joe. That'll Definitely. Cool. And then uh, look, if, if, when I get a date, if you guys put a date on next time in Cape Town, I'm, I'm more than happy to pop in. And come actually come join you guys for a day. Um, Fantastic! It'd be nice to have not, you. I, I I I'd love to come learn more than uh, I, I'm one of those weird people. I I I mean I did Barry Ashmold sheet metal course twice, not because I'm slow. It's just I really enjoy it. <laughs> um, because <laughs> I, I believe cool. you, everything is good to learn. I, that is the you know that's why we're here. Yeah, to to build as much knowledge. Something you guys should look into uh, when you do the course. Uh, a few years ago, I got involved with a guy that wanted to do a hot rod school in South Africa. Um, long story short, the school didn't work out. But we, we ran some numbers. And uh, we started asking people, what was the one thing they wanted to learn when it came to cars? Right. And you, you would think it was timing, motor building, or, or anything like that. The thing we always got back, the main thing came down to welding. How to use a tick or a MIG welder. Um, and we used to put that down to the fact that, that generations aren't passing on knowledge like they used to. You know, your dad's not teaching you how to weld. Uh, your dad's not teaching you how to use molds. And as much as you had schools and this type of stuff, um, and, and that's something we always, that's always fascinated me was the fact that out of every, every skill that the guy, when it comes to building, the only thing guys wanted to know was, was, you know, how to, and I'm, I'm not even, even stick welding. Um, they just wanted to learn. It's like the fundamentals of, of everything that you wanted to do. Um, it so is, yeah, guys, welding is cool. Welding, welding is, cool. is so It's the most manly thing you can do, you know? <laughs> You, you're melting, melting steel together. You may, it's, it can be sparking, it is smoke, and you end up with this thing that you can't break, and it's amazing. So we all love welding, mm. um, and we have fun with different kinds of welding, from the stick welding, yeah. which we all cut out on, you know, because you've got a stick welder at home. Um, and to, you burn more holes than you actually weld your first few welds. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what you do when you're welding as a 14-year-old boy with short pants on. You end up... Uh, Roasting your fires, you get terrible <laughs> sunburns. If, if, and that, if the sparks aren't shooting up in your shorts, yes. Right. <laughs> I've, had so many, I've had so many blobs of molten steel fall <laughs> under my boots. And there's no point, because by the time you get the boot off, the fire's gone yeah. out anyway, so I just leave it there. Um, so yeah, we all, start, we all start there, I think. And then you go to your TIG, and, and why would you do TIG over, over stick? Of course, mm. there's many, many reasons. Many. Uh, and then there's MIG. Mig is, you know, Mig is lovely, but it's, it's not, it's not TIG. So you, there's a choice to make and then grazing with the gas. Yeah. Um, I've got to, I'm getting invaded by a dog here. Hang on. This is Joshua. Okay. Joshua. Oh, you got, so I've, I've got a sausage as well. Mine's called Chevy. I've got, I've got three Chevy. Of course it's called Chevy. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, we'll do one. We'll do one soon. Actually, we'll make, we'll make a point of doing a welding clinic soon. Good. In the next six weeks. Mm. Now, cool. So, what's next on your card? I mean, so you guys are now you guys are busy playing with things that are not Harpers. Is there is there another development on the Harper side coming on? Are you guys still playing with something new? Um, what, what's yes. the next step there? Yes, there are. We we very keen to get into the electric car conversion business. We feel like uh, there's some Ooh. some some old classics. Yeah, so some old classics that are running around or not running around. Where the engine was never the never the real point of it, mm. uh, the engine was always a bit 
you know, a, a boring, if you like, but the car is beautiful. And um, we see perhaps uh, half a sports car playing in, the, in that area where we, we designed bespoke installations for, uh, for to put an electric drivetrain and batteries, et cetera, into a lovely classic car that is beautiful and but is not practical because it's just we can't get engine parts or leaks oil everywhere or something. Exactly. And I don't mean like an E-type. Yeah. I mean like something, uh, you know, Beetle's obvious choices. The mm -hmm. Beetle engine was never, never fantastic, let's say. Um, so Beetles and combis and things are, are widely done in the, in the US. And but the UK. Other cars, you know, other cars. Mm. And the UK, yes. We, we, we actually um, had um, my friends on the other day from Zero E, um, EV on the, on the show. They are in the UK and they're busy putting electric motors into Porsche boxes, they've done buses and all this stuff. I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll be more than happy to put you guys in. I think it for a company. Wonderful. I, I will put you in touch with them because the, the, the crap that we have in South Africa is we, do not, we don't have Tesla and all these brands um, and stripping, finding a Jaguar to strip or, you know, a Prius or, or something to strip is, is very hard in South Africa. I mean, if we, if we sell this in parts, we're moving on. So I'm more than happy. Yeah. I'll put you guys in touch with the guys in the UK. Um, and Please do. All, yeah, they're very cool when it comes to these type of things. Because I, as much as I love V8, I, I honestly believe this is the way forward. It's such an interesting debate, isn't it? It's probably a, a yeah. debate for another night, in a way. No, you know, it's you good. We're drinking journal. wine. Let's have it tonight. <laughs> Let's do it tonight. I'm sure you're going to have a very polarized um, uh, listenership or audience mm -hmm. because the, the internal combustion engine is such a miraculous thing, isn't it? You know, you get beautiful. into suck, squeeze, bang, and blow at all kinds of crazy RPM, making incre incredible um, power numbers and noise and drama and and uh, and as a petrol head as a train mechanic a person that has loved taking engines to pieces since a very young age um 16 15 16 years old i was finding camshafts for for minis and i went off to a person called bruce glasby and if you've ever googled bruce glasby's um mini fundi of note and he and turns out he had actually cut the can himself like, wow, you know, GP3 on the end of the cam. And he says, yeah, we cut that several years ago. It's too hot for your engine. Don't use it. Of course, I used it. Of course, it was too hot. But that's, <laughs> that's what young people do. Um, um, so you've got all that stuff going on, all that, all that symphony of things that make an engine work. Mm. And then you have, uh, and why do we love it? Do we love it because of all the symphony or could, because, it, because it gives us power under our foot? And then you go to a Tesla or, or something like a very high-powered electric car, and you have that infinite control of that power under your foot without exactly. any of the drama. What are we giving up? So it's an interesting conversation to have. It, I, I, it is better. It to, is better. To but me, is it better from an emotional perspective? I don't know. Yeah, but come on. If, if we're talking from an emotional perspective of the beauty of it, 350 Chevy, V12 Lambo motor or Ferrari motor, I mean, or was it the straight, the straight eights that they had in Bugatti? Those are beautiful machines. I mean, the motors yes, are beautiful. Ah, oh, all right, exactly. Now, then you, you, you're looking at the pinnacle of engineering and, and everything that went. You're not talking about a four bang or whether a three banger that's sitting in a what's it, Chevy Atos or something like that, you know? Um, I, I believe. We're going to get to a stage where our, our classic cars are going to have their, their, their original motors and they're going to have everything. And you're going to drive it every now and then and you're going to appreciate it as, as much as everything else. Like a fine glass of wine, okay? Something you enjoy every now and then. But our daily drivers are going to become, get to the, you know, to the electrical section. I believe that the rest on the rest of mod part is guys are going to start. Are gonna, we're going to run out of points. It might be 20 years down the line where you can't go buy an Alice motor anymore, a second hand Alice motor, and you can't go buy this type of car. The only available options, or you, the, the governments have put regulations to the point where 
it's just going to be way too expensive to drive that electric car, that 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 the oil, the, the, the gas guzzler, and that type of stuff. And electrics is going to be there. So rather change the mindset and embrace now, and try and preserve and go. Well, here is an E-Type with electric motor in it. Yeah, cool. It's much quieter and it doesn't have the rumbly, but hell, you know, it actually drives farther, <laughs> further than the E-Type goes. <laughs> it stops more. <laughs> <Not breaking. laughs> I know I'm going to get so much hey, email from the Jag guys. Gonna... <laughs> you need both. You need both. And, and look, so, so your older classics, they get more difficult to run. And who knows oh. how to tune an SU carburetor anymore? I mean, for goodness exactly. sakes, it's getting to be a bit of a dark art these days. Mm. Um, and in 100 years, we think, we think in terms of our own lifespan, don't we? We think about yeah, 70, 90 years. So bottom end 70, high end 90. That's the sort of what yeah. we would like to aim for, I guess. It's nothing. It's nothing at all. It's a snapshot in, oh. in history. But we think a thousand years from now, how hard is it to find a decent guy that can tune a carburetor? At the moment? It's all fuel injection. Yeah, so uh, it's all fuel injection. Um, uh, and we, I can tune carbs, but you can't get access to jets. So if you have a set of uh, three, three um, is, um, Webers, yeah. lovely big Weber 45s on, on, a, on an Aston Martin or something. Exactly. And, and I get called into... To, to get it to run properly, and I say, well, you know, we need to go up a size on the jets. We're not going to find jets, so it's not that you can't just dial in a bigger jet size like I can on on um, a fuel injected car that I'm tuning. Mm. We need to go up on the jet size. We go up five points. We go up ten points. It's done. We got more fuel. I'm going to take the jets out. I've got to go and find a set of jets. I, I don't carry a box of jets around with me. I have to, uh, and that's, and that's, you have to mill a new set of jets, or you know, because they, they don't make sold them up. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so the inconvenience, you see, I mean, do we love driving cars because we lo love looking for arcade little bits and pieces for the cars? No, I love driving cars because I love the feeling of moving and the extension exactly. and it makes me feel like a Superman, you know? The fact that there's an engine in the front making all the noise and carrying on, it's, is it important? I want, I want the results. Um, I appreciate the the heart of the engine of the heart of the car throbbing away, yeah. but I, I want the result. I want I want to I want to move forward. I want to accelerate now, it's on the limit of traction immediately, not waiting for the torque to build up. And eventually, I'm battling with boost or the cam comes on or something, and I've now got wheel spin. So, as a as a person who loves driving, and as a mechanic, and as an objective observer of the electric uh, revolution that's happening to the world, it's a very interesting time to be. In no, my well, game, in our game, at the moment. If, if if you take it down from from a landing zone, okay. So so let's take an old 911 Porsche or something like that. So now you've got someone that goes, oh no, it's a, it has to be an air cooled motor and old 911. That's the that's the way the world goes, and that's the perfect thing. Mm -hmm. So you eliminate the motor. So you're taking the one aspect off your suspension, your braking, and everything is still exactly the same. Okay. When that car drives, the, the only I think the worst part will be with the old cars is you will actually hear every grunt, moan, crack, squeak on that car for that first day that, that electric motor's in because you don't have the motors blaring in the background. That's drowning out every other noise that's on that on that thing. Um, yeah. That's the only, to me, that's the only drawback at the moment, you know? Um, yeah, I, it's a, I, I know, look, I, like I said, I know there's going to be the purists and the guys that's going to go, oh, V8 and, you know, and all this type of stuff. And I get it. I, I get, I love V8. I love big, big blocks. Um, but, you know, when you have to sell your kid because you want to go to a, a motor show on the weekend and you can't afford the fuel. Um, you know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's when you have to start gauging so, up the numbers, you know. So the thing with, with electric car conversions here at the moment is that they are not an, an economical option. Okay, mm -hmm. you're not going to save any money. Wait to it's, uh, it's a It's a 300 to 700,000. Yeah. There's no upper limit. Mm -hmm. spent. Um, so there's a lot of money that goes into converting a car to electric. It's way cheaper to buy an OEM uh, car. My friends are talking about about two to twenty five thousand pounds. 
That's before it shipped into the country. That's like on the cheap level of converting That's for to a electric. Kit. Yeah. 25,000. Yeah. Does it include pounds. Does it include batteries? I think that includes batteries, yes. So that's that's very okay. cheap, but you, you're still you're sitting at pounds. So you're sitting at still two or two, three hundred thousand? No more. Twenty, mate. Twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you're sitting at five four, five hundred K. You can get a nice still, LS. And you and you could get a very nice LS for, for that price. <laughs> very nice. So so uh, we would like to we, we Sorry, Joe, we would love to, as a, as a design agency type business type thing, we would like to develop um, a cartridge type um, plug-in module for electric uh, safari vehicles. Mm -hmm. You pull out your whole engine and gearbox out of your Land Cruiser, out of your Nissan Patrol, out of your Land Rover, yeah. and in, in goes yeah. and drops in on the same mountings an electric drivetrain with batteries and controllers. For game vehicles, it makes... Beautiful sense, completely silent, completely silent. They're actually much easier to drive, much easier to drive. You leave the high and low range in, um, and off you go. I mean, fantastic. You just, and, you know, when you, when you pull up to, to a standstill and you've got that perfect shot, and then the bloody animal moves two feet to the left, you just glide forward two feet. You yeah. don't have to stop the engine, again, stick it in gear, go forward, switch off destroying the, the 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 experience so we we would love to get into that space and then the conversion of, of old of really old classics where we don't destroy the old engine at all you take it out you you, you make that's, it beautiful make it into a very display in your lounge or whatever mm -hmm. in your pub that's and, what my friend uh, Craig was saying usable. they said they, they yeah. the conversions that they're doing on Porsches uh, and stuff at the moment they're actually they're taking the motors out the original motors out and they're dressing them up beautifully and they're giving them to the client to put in their houses. Um, in five or six years, and they're putting the, they're putting the conversion, but the, the conversion becomes such a bolt-on system that when the guy sells the car, he sells the electric car with the original motor. So if the new owner goes, ah, I don't want the electric option. Exactly. Goes, oh, dude, it says like, 10 bolts and you're in. You know? Need a lift and... Pretty much. 13 spanner and a 10 spanner and you, you, you get good to go, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, okay, that's what people say in a brochure. But yeah, about, 10, 10, about 10 different 10 spanners because you always lose about five of them, you know, the first day. But, <laughs> Those but, are slippery little fuckers. Yes. But it, look, like I said, it, it makes sense, okay? I mean, it, the, the guys I've been talking to, um, and I, I have been getting slack. Uh, because I've been talking to a lot of guys about the electric options and stuff these days. Um, mainly because I own, you know, a hot rod magazine that's supposed to be all you know, V8. Um, and like I said, I keep saying, I, I don't, it's not that I don't, I love V8, but I, I have to, you have to look at what's moving forward, you know? And this coronavirus, I mean, we, as much as sounding like a hippie, you, you have to think there's a massive impact that we could see the difference over the last few months on the environment. We could we can see what the impact of not so many cars on the road has done, you know. Um, and that that needs to play in. Yeah, you can be as hard headed and go, oh, oh fuck you, I'm so drive my V8 because that's what I love. Then do it. But like I said, at least create an open mind of what is to come. It's, it's like when, when we had to start paying for plastic bags, okay? To some people, it was the fucking end of the world, okay? Oh my God, you have to pay for a plastic bag. It is the. I, I know my dad went completely apeshit the first time I went into a spa and they're like, Did he lose? Ah, oh, you want plastic? I'm like, fucking plastic bag. Brought my own, you know? And, and because it's so upset that he had to pay for it. But it, it made so much sense because you could actually see the difference that, that it made along uh, further on down the line. Yeah. You could see that yeah. there was less plastic and stuff now. Um, yeah. And I, I think electric cars are going to get to the same. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of fight, but guys, it's, it's, it's going to happen. So let's rather 
figure out how we're going to enjoy it and how we can embrace it instead of fighting against it. That, that's my reason. That's my way of looking. Um, um, hero um, and um, an inspiration for me is Elon Musk. Yeah. And, um, and I think what he talks, the way, the way he talks about um, transport into the future is for me very interesting and he's i think he's a genius i think oh, he's beyond doubt that he's a genius uh, have, have and, you seen uh, the the interview um if you love podcasts um joe rogan has interviewed yeah so well, oh. the, 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 just one interview or is it there's a there second many, one there's several there's a second one that well, he I, must, did. I must look i must look for it but he talks oh. about he talks about transport from a from an aspect that Perhaps we don't appreciate in this country so much because for many parts, in many parts of the world, driving to work is not fun. It's not nice at all. It's a, it's a complete pain. Yes, um, you are, you, what you're trying to do is not drive into the car in front of you and you're trying to get into the right lane and then get to work. So you don't want to be driving a thumping cami V8 in that shit with a, with a heavy clutch. I mean, you're just not going to want to do that. So you either get an electric car Autonomous, if possible, so you don't have to worry about driving the guy in front because it's a full, it's a forty-minute drive, or it's an hour and a half to work, plus it and home twice a day. You want to read a book, or you want to speak yeah. to your wife, or you want to watch a movie or something. So, so, so those those environments make perfect sense. We don't appreciate it in this country because we don't. Not many of us sit in that kind of environment. Johannesburg and Russia, Cape Town, certainly. Joe Russia. Work in Cape Town. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I make, I do not go in traffic. I'm a terrible driver in traffic. Don't put me there. It'll be, it'll end badly. Mm. I just avoid rush hour and, and driving in those paradigms. But I love driving. So there's an argument for not using transport to get your own transport to get to work in the morning. No, mm. you rent that or you Uber or you, you do something else. Then you can keep your passion, your sports car, your exactly. hot rod camper that becomes your your love child and that's when you take that out you take it out when you can drive it where you want to drive it how you want to drive it obviously always safely and responsibly but you can really enjoy it you can come back you can tinker with it you can you know you can tighten up the very exhaust mounting because it came loose again or mm. whatever and you and that stays in your in your garage you don't know, use that to go to work i think there'll be this and and that's the way that elon must put it he says people have will have internal combustion engine cars the same way that people today have horses. Yes. They love them, they change them, they love riding them, but you wouldn't use it as a utility thing. It's a, it's a, it's exactly. a leisure thing. It's you know, the best love it. Can, can you imagine laying on your couch on a Sunday afternoon, the world is quiet, and you hear a six-liter V8 come running past a highway, you'll hear it for miles. You'll appreciate it for miles, you know, or, or the sound of a Lambo or something like that. Every every sound of this combustion mode, the combustion, will be will be more. You know, now now you know the, we we always joke about you know a car guy when he's sitting in a pub and everyone's talking and he stops and he goes, okay, there's a Mustang just drove past. You know, he could hear it. He knew what it was. He can, you know. Um, to me, it's just, we, we'll get to that point where people will just appreciate it more. That sound of a V12 or a V10 or a V8 or, or something. God, even maybe the sound of a Honda motor will, you know, excite people at some point in their lives. But it's, it's just, it will, like I said, we'll appreciate it more when, when they're not so, around. I, Let's let's imagine a future fifty years from now when your average person, your average person, we're a dying breed. Mm. That's what I honestly believe. You and I and and our brothers and sisters like us are a dying breed. People, uh, ten, fifteen years now from now won't be won't be driving. They won't they won't they won't even know what a gear shift looks like or a clutch pedal. They they they'll be Ubering to work. They, they, so this, I'm worried that we're going to die out as a, as, a, as, a brand, as, a, as a breed of people. And they're not going to appreciate a six-liter V8 going past, uh, waking them up on a Sunday afternoon. They're going to be hot full of that shit. 
I, so I there's, have... I'm working. Ah, They're not going to appreciate it. I have our foundation. My, my daughter's three at the moment, okay? And my daughter can identify a Mustang. She can sit outside with me and she knows when V8s are coming past. Um, I believe cog people will always have. As long as there's two things that can go faster than each other, okay? Car guys will always exist, okay? <laughs> and if, if you look at the appreciation towards the old and the new, yeah, how can I put it? But that's very, the Lambo brings out a new Lambo and everybody goes, oh man, it's so cool, blah, blah, blah. And even though it was the, I know because I've driven one, a good touch pulls up. Okay. It was horrible to drive. It's bad maintenance, everything. Everybody turns around because it's a good touch. Okay. It will always be a good touch. Um, car people will always be there. Doesn't matter. We, we, they're going to build a hyper cars that's going to go a thousand kilometers an hour, but the E type will always be the most beautiful design car. Who's ever been? Yeah, the Eagle E Type. I agree with you. The Eagle E Type looked like it was not needed. That tiny, skinny, bloody tires. The bloody body was was <laughs> beautiful, but it hung up. It looked like I forgot to put the wheels on the thing. The Eagle. Oh, now there, the bright oh. wheels on. Listen, I, I've got. Um, I, I'm trying to get. There's a, a, a American guy called Rob Idol. Um, I'm trying to get him on the show. He he's built. Uh, his his dad actually owned a Tucker dealership back in the day, right? You know the Tucker? Sorry, you've never heard of the Tucker? <gasps> oh, there's a dude. You've got to see this. The the Tucker is um, it, it, it's a big movie about it. I think it's called The Tucker and Its Dream. It it's a true story about a guy that built. It was the first rear motor uh, mounted car it had three headlights and the center headlight would turn this is in the 19 man, i think it was 1950s he invented seat belts okay he, he had this idea yeah no go go check it out tucker they actually built uh there was called tucker 48 um i think they they did about 62 cars and then um but this is during the big time between ford and gm and this type of stuff now he's he's built tuckers. Um, he's he, two of his tuckers have been to um, man. I'm busy with it now. Uh, Barry Jackson, okay, um, auctioned off as some of the highest. Um, Tucker actually had an original dream for a car, uh, the original Tucker that he wanted to build, but technology didn't exist. And Rob Idol is busy building Tucker's original dream car. Um, as a side oh, project, that is cool. yeah, you know, it's insane. Go, 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 seriously, go check out the Tucker. It, it, it I'm going to Google it. Yeah, no, you, you will. You, and go, go check the movie. I think the movie actually might be on, um, I think it might be on Netflix and stuff as well. Um, they, uh, now he's got, he got his hand on an E-Type. And he's busy ripping an E-Type to shred. Because... Like you just said, oh, man, this is too big and this. He's busy reshaping because he, he is a complete master fabricator in the U.S. And he's busy remaking every panel and he's rebuilding the, this E-type. I'll send you the link. You go, go check out his Facebook page. Cool. This blows your mind. And then you'll see, when you see a Tucker, you'll know which car I'm talking about. But you got to go check out Tucker in the Dream. That's actually insane. Uh, true story. Um, Everything he had developed for cars, which is now like, like a, I should you not say seat belts. He was the first guy to have seat belts in it. And then the government said that they think it's a bad idea because it says that cars are unsafe. So he had seat belts in rear first, rear mounted motor, um, because weight for weight distribution, it was revolutionary the these cars that he bought. Um, but yeah, I'll go check out the Tucker. Anyway, but I will both, yeah. And I, I know uh, Rob uh, posted photos of this E-Type that he's built. I know he's chopped the roof. 
you just change the lines and it's just so everything flows a little bit more than what it did. Anyway, coming back to what we said, people will always love old cars. I don't think anybody will ever turn around and go, oh my God, I will, I, if I have to look at one more 69 tomorrow, I'm going to puke. Okay, <laughs> this is, they're pretty. <laughs> or why oh god not another 58 cadillac convertible you know i mean those wings and and this is I don't know, it's motion of art and motion now 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 here's the thing i think this is where you and i might walk a different path because those big gigantic american cars the, yeah, the 500 the fair lane and they i'm just looking at that thing how am i going to stop this how am I going to get this around a corner? And that's that's my psyche playing through. Um, uh, you know, you I make want, a bigger I, I, road. I think I really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, fair enough. That is a solution. Make the road straight <laughs> and get all your mats in here because there's room. There's room for everybody. Exactly. You know? So it's a different. It's a different. My, my, idea. My, it's a different thing. One of my friends had a, a Lincoln Continental. And uh, but he lived in Garden in Cape Town, and uh, Yo. I know, right? To try and get that link, parking, sheesh, parking. And, but the, the funniest thing is, we, we would go for a drive in this Lincoln, and yeah, I mean, you know how gardens are small, that's how small this roads are, the turns, and it's like a ship. He would like sit and go, the corner's there, and he's like, oh, shit. I'm like, you see that arm start. <laughs> And then it's a, it's like sit sit and all of a sudden it's like ship the nose starts <laughs> turning across. <laughs> and then it's like eh, 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 eh. okay we're around the corner. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, what a Fiat five hundred net space, mate. Oh no, look, um, look, I, I had a forty nine Chev. I, I was talking to Kurt Skunrad the other day. One of my most memorable times of my life is I, I got to do a road trip with a friend, uh, Piet Berger, in a 58 Cadillac convertible. We did Route 62. Beautiful. Um, Beautiful. I mean, Beautiful. We, we, did, we were hitting like, it's 50 miles an hour. That's, that's all it can do. And we, we, had, <laughs> we had to top well, down. Really yeah, we had to top down. We had Bob Seger playing on the back seat. Yeah, he had like an iPod. You know, music station. It's Bob Seger and Chris yeah. playing, and you just like cruising through the crew and this thing. Yeah, you, know, you got smoking cigars, and it was just that is probably one of the best memories ever in my life. Um, yeah, I can you, imagine. You can't explain that. You can't explain that to 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 someone. You know, um, yeah. That's why, I, like I said, I I think. As much as electric cars and, and this type of stuff is going to take off, there's, there's still going to be that love. There's that love for cars, man. Um, for old cars. It's just, they've got so much personality. There's just yeah. so much love. Yeah, so, so, so the experience of going away in a big, in, a, in a, any car, um, that needn't change. You know, uh, let's, think, let's think long term. You know, uh, let's think beyond our lifetimes. Those cars will still be around, but getting, keeping them going will get harder and harder and exactly. harder. So, you know, what are we going to put in here? We, we you know, the battery tech's going to get better and better. So, things won't be such a challenge. Uh, and in our own country, where there's no infrastructure for mm. charging cars, that'll change as well over time. So, it's going to be a gentle shift here. Um, but you can imagine a future where you can have a Cadillac convertible, a 58 or a 60, whatever. I don't know much about Cadillacs. Um, but but instead of um, the big V8 in the front, there's an electric motor. One of those is a, a big electric motor. Mm. And look, you don't want to, It's not a performance car, so you, it must get up to speed. It must hum along, and the mu you must hear the music. You must mm. feel the air. You must hear the hear the birds. It's almost a win-win, you know. And that that car will last indefinitely. Dude, after that, this is it. We all we talking about. Is the DeLorean from Back to What's Back to the Future? Hangs down. It's still a DeLorean, but it's got this thing on the back where you can throw trash in, and that was fueling the DeLorean. 
That all we're talking about moving to the future is exactly what the DeLorean did in Back to the Future 2. <laughs> yeah. And, and no, that, the future I mean, so interesting, mate. We can only uh, imagine it. It's going to be insane. It's going to be insane. Listen, we, yo, listen, we, 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 this has been a, such a cool conversation. I, I haven't had this. I've loved it. Wow, man. We should do this again. <laughs> definitely, definitely. But, we, um, we will do this again. No, no, definitely we will. And we'll have more wine next time as well. That's actually why I need to cut it because I'm, I'm almost out of wine. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, thanks for being on the show, man. This has been fun. I, uh, definitely when I come to Cape Town, I'm going to pop in and come see you guys. Um, Please do. I, yeah, I, 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 must. I, I would love to take one of your hops out for a drive for one day. A proper drive. I mean, I, I've run around like a shopping set, like a business complex with one of them one day. Um, I'd love to take it out on a proper drive. Um, maybe I'll stick a camera in the car with me and we can, we can like, document the experience. Sure. So, uh, but um, I, I, I'd love so to give it, give it the, the respect that it's due. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. I think we do it properly. We'll, um, we'll set it up. You must um, let's just talk. The, the track's now open again. So the ideal, the ideal experience for you would be to pick up the car at our, our shop, drive it to the racetrack, yeah, mm -hmm. with cameras. Go Chapman's Peak, and you go Victoria Drive, and you go through the, the exactly. Sea Point and the Boulevard, and out to the track. That's an experience that a Harper can give you. Any sports car can give you that experience. Um, but then you get onto the racetrack, you pull your helmet on, and you do some laps, and you're doing laps in the low twenties in the same car on the same exactly. tires. And that's quicker than a GT3 Porsche. Same car, same tires. So, and you can drive it home afterwards. So, that I think that would be a, a cool thing to set up for you. You'd, you'd come away with a with a real understanding of of the philosophy behind the car, which is a it's a race car for the road that we, I've designed. And, and that just screams an episode for Rod Shop, eh? That that screams yep. like a, like an episode for my TV show. Maybe we should make that happen. All right. Consider it, consider it done. <laughs> so you have a good day and a good evening. Um, enjoy the dogs. Uh, I'm going to go get some more wine. But um, yeah, man, thank you so much for the chat. And uh, it's seriously, we two do this again. All right. 100%. Thanks for sharing an evening with me. Thank you, Joe. Okay, good man. Night. Thanks, eh? Cheers. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>